First, though, let's get to our first big guest of the hour to talk about the markets and the post-election investing landscape. Joining us now is Mario Gabelli. He's chairman and CEO of Gamco Investors. And Mario, I spoke with you a couple of weeks ago, and you'd been looking at all of these different ways to kind of game this out. The idea of a, of a blue wave was one that you had been considering and kind of gaming through. Now what do you do? Oh, nothing uh, different. Uh, we look at the landscape and the economic landscape with a microscope and a telescope. Obviously, all your uh, individuals that are talking about the election have compounded and accumulated knowledge because they've looked at past elections. From my point of view, I take that same telescope, same microscope, and look at individual companies. For example, Becky, yesterday we had 28 companies talking about the auto industry. What's going on with the consumer? Why are they taking personal transportation as opposed to mass transportation? Why are they living in the cities? And those are important dynamics. From the elections point of view, uh, to the degree you have a balanced uh, structure, that's terrific. Uh, we then have to step back and step back and say, okay, what does that mean for the economy for 2021? Uh, what does it mean uh, with uh, regards to a uh, stimulation, an extra arrow in the stimulus bill that Jay Powell has talked about that we need? Will uh, Nancy Pelosi and Mnuchin get it done in the next 60 days where we need it? And uh, the market's looking at that. Then they're looking at the question of the, what we talked about, the vaccine. I'm very optimistic because we solved polo, we solved uh, polio, we solved uh, 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 the uh, HIV, we solved measles, uh, we solved smallpox, and we uh, will do this with regards to... Uh, this pandemic and this uh, particular virus. So then the question is, will people take it? So the economy in 2021, you got a long runway in, in the auto industry. There's limited car deal, uh, cars at the dealership level. They're cranking up production. There's some logistical issues with regards to supply. Housing has a good runway. But then you step back to the election. What happens to taxes? How do we pay for this? Will it ignite inflation? Mm -hmm. Who's going to replace Jay, the two Jays? Jay Clayton is retiring. Jay Powell, uh, if Biden wins, will he keep him? Uh, then you have a G pie. What we learned in this, uh, and Barry, the two Barrys after me are going to talk about the digital revolution and how that impacts real estate and how it impacts the, the world that they're a part of. But uh, looking at the direct to remote learning, remote work, what do we learn differently? The consumers going and buying things on a remote basis, Becky. So we see a lot of pluses. But, but Mary, you're asking all the right questions. I don't know what the answers are to some of them, though. If you're, if you're looking at stimulus, if you're looking at taxes, let's start with. Well, I look at the taxes, an ideal world from my point of view, and I don't want to do what Jack Ma did with the Chinese government and say, this is what I'm proposing <laughs> and you've got to follow it. But on the other side of the coin, let's be practical. Why do we have carried interest? That is absurd. And for those that, uh, that's basically where uh, uh, some organizations like PE firms can take a capital gain tax rather than ordinary income. We didn't get rid of it when Obama was in power. Should we get rid of it now? Yes. Section 1031, where you can roll over gains on real estate to another piece of real estate. Should we be paying a higher tax? You know, if you live in New York City, right now you're paying a much higher tax under the new tax bill than you did prior to that because of the limitations on salt, state and local taxes. You live in uh, uh, Florida, you live in Wyoming. We, uh, you know, I don't think Andrew lives in those two places, but you would be paying less taxes, but that's different. So do we go from 37 to 39? Do we compromise? Is Mitch McConnell gonna be able to handle a compromise with his counterpart in the House, uh, Pelosi? Assuming both are there, well, me, will they me, be able to come? So that's the Let me tax throw one issue. more on that. If if you're looking at stimulus that probably is not going to include plans for the cities and states at this point, because with Mitch McConnell, if the Senate stays with the Republicans, that's going to be very hard pressed to get through no matter who wins the presidency. If you make that assumption, you might from there decide that places like New York and New Jersey will seek even higher taxes than the increases that they've already recently won in order to try and make up some of that shortfall. What, what does that mean for the economy in local places like that? How does that play out in the economy on a grander scale if you see layoffs coming from state and local governments as a result? Well, I'm not, you know, look, when you look at the U.S. economy, 70 percent of our uh, uh, 20 uh, trillion dollars is from the consumer. We represent 24.1 percent of the global economy based on the International Monetary Fund. China's 18 and a half percent. So when I look at the kinetic and impact, consumers, 70 percent, autos can do well leaving the cities and uh, 
you know, staycations and uh, driving, that helps the auto industry. That's an important job creator. And America is doing a good job at uh, that. There's some logistical issues. Yesterday, Becky, the truck market, Class A big trucks, came in at a high, extraordinarily high rate in the month of October in terms of incoming orders. They were like 39,800. Then you look at the state and local. We've going to have to spend money. You know, we're going to have to invest. I mean, you know, take Mayor Mike uh, Bloomberg. He did a great job in New York. Giuliani helped him uh, before that. And uh, de Blasio didn't put the money away for a rainy day. He just bloated the cost structure. So mm -hmm. if you're living outside of the New York area or outside of San Francisco and other major cities, you're asking, why do I have to pay for inefficiency of government? So that's the, that's the tension. Independent of that, People are leaving New York. They're leaving Indianapolis. Uh, XYZ company, I, I will tell you the name, uh, it says our truck business is booming because people are renting trucks to move furniture out of these inner cities. So there's a trade-off on that. And uh, clearly, let, from let my point of view, oh. if, if Andrew could have his salt tax reduced to where it was before, then it won't be as bad if he's paying 40% and 15% uh, uh, to New York City. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.